Good afternoon, proletariat! Welcome to Turbo Tuesday. Here at MBT Industries, we are constantly innovating our way to the Yugist revolution. The working duelists of the world can't be led by just anyone, so before we can begin disassembling the oppressive metagame, we need to locate the boss to end all bosses, combing through 20 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! history in the process. As always, we'll give any fledgling leader of the Vanguard a quick once-over, a chance to prove themselves, and a performance review that will determine if they'll be called back to the next round of interviews, or if they'll need some effect adjustment in our re-education facility. Today, on special recommendation from Comrade Burrito Man, we have Cyblocker. Before we check out today's corporate stooge, however, a word about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck, the best online site for database searching, deck building, and strategy articles, all conveniently located at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now, let's take a look at that resume. Hmm... Once per turn, you can declare one card name. Cards with that name and their effects cannot be used until the end of your opponent's next turn. One card? Well, that's not very exciting. I mean, what could we possibly accomplish prohibiting one card? One measly, useless, single card. One solitary, all- Hold on. I'm noticing there's not a hard once per turn on this effect. Okay, well that changes everything. We're going to slot you into our plant division. It's a little dated, but with some creative combo theory lifted from Sampai, we just might be able to wrest control of the ban list from Konami's authoritarian grip to our own. We'll prohibit not only the entirety of our opponent's deck, but also the entirety of the card pool. We're going to have to hope that they're willing to sit through a loop execution upwards of 10,000 times, but let's be real. If they're willing to sit through Infernoble setups, it's probably not much different. So with that, let's send our leader to the Edo Pro ladder. Our match is up against number 77, Lucky Straight Turbo. Ah, a fellow man of culture. Though truthfully, it doesn't matter what our opponent's playing. We're going to shuffle our hand back into our deck because there's too many garnets in this one. Then we'll do it again. Okay, good, a monster. We'll activate Orphus Scorpio's effect, pitching an Exodius to get a copy of Darling Tonia Cobra, whose effect we will activate for an instant fusion. We'll go into a Jasmine and stop asking me for the Aroma TMT. We'll use its effect to tribute the Darkfire Dragon we instant fusioned for a Lone Fire and... Yeah, you always knew that Lone Fire was going to be the center of this unfair FTK. We'll go into a Herald of the Arclight with Spore before bringing Spore back and overlaying for Dugaris. We'll activate Dugaris' effect, bringing back Lone Fire Blossom, and triggering Herald for Paladin of Dark Dragon. We'll activate Lone Fire for a copy of Mardell and activate its effect to add from deck to hand a copy of Talismandra. We'll go into Cross Sheep and then activate Talismandra, summoning a Candall from deck and using Candall's effect in order to add from deck to hand a copy of Inception. We'll activate Inception's effect to get a copy of Paladin and then Inception's Graveyard effect to get a copy of Talismandra from deck. We'll activate Paladin to summon a copy of Red Eyes, and then activate Red Eyes' effect to summon a Dark Fire from Grave. This triggers the Cross Sheep for a Lone Fire, which we will activate pitching this Talismandra for a Giga Plant. We'll go into Barricade Borg, into LP, trigger the effect of LP, get ourselves a copy of Brotar, activate its effect targeting Barricade Borg for Cyberstein, and Saruya Skulldread will summon this sucker out. We'll activate the effect of Cyberstein. What powerful monster will we summon? Super Alloy Beast. This is going to turn all of our Giga Plants into spam machines. We'll use this combo, which you'll see about 15 15 times this turn, Gigaplant into Lone Fire into Gigaplant into Lone Fire into Gigaplant. The two used Gigaplants are going to build the overlay network for a Beatrice Lady of the Eternal. That's going to send an Exodius to the graveyard, then we'll use the unused Gigaplant to bring back a Gigaplant, and then link a whole bunch of stuff off for Traffic Ghost. We'll bring back one more Gigaplant before making Tolmy M7 and using its effect to put the Exodius back in hand. Gigaplant is going to bring back Lone Fire Blossom this time, we'll make Ghost and shuffle everything back into the deck so we can summon Exodius. We'll activate Lone Fire Blossom to get a Gigaplant from deck and hey, Hey, this looks familiar! Giga plant into Lone Fire into Giga plant into Lone Fire into Giga plant into Lone Fire. Hmm. One of those Giga plants will remain unused, so we'll overlay for a Beatrice once again, sending another copy of Exodius. We need two of them in rotation. We'll use Giga plant to bring back Giga plant and make Traffic Ghost. Giga plant will bring back a Giga plant. We'll use Giga plant to bring back a Giga plant and overlay for a Tolmy. We'll use Tolmy's effect, putting this copy of Exodius back in hand before Giga planting once again for a Lone Fire Blossom. That way we can make a Barricade Borg and then shuffle everything back to summon the second Exodius. We'll overlay for an Infinity Dark Utopic. Realistically, it doesn't matter what material you're using here. We're going to go for a copy of Giga plant from Deck, into Lone Fire, into Gigaplant, into Lone Fire, into Gigaplant. God, I'm getting sick of saying this already. 
Finally, we're going to have all three on our side of the field, and from here we can make a copy of Ceruya. We'll activate Gigaplant's effect, bring back Gigaplant, and here's where things start changing. We'll go into Tolmy, this time we're going to add the Exodius that's already in Graveyard back to our hand before Gigaplanting into Gigaplant, and then going into a copy of Traffic Ghost. Gigaplant this time is going to bring back Gigaplant, is going to bring back Gigaplant, god, it's just infinite link material, and Tolmy is going to add a second Exodius to our grip. From here, we'll get back the Lone Fire Blossom and go into Traffic Ghost before activating the first Exodius's effect, and then Lone Fire to start the Gigaplant chain all over again. Super Alloy Beast, really coming in clutch. We'll summon as many Giga Plants as possible, and now it is time to perform an extremely heinous loop. We're going to overlay for Beatrice and activate her effect, this time to send a Psy Blocker to the graveyard. Giga Plant will get Giga Plant, and we'll make Traffic Ghost again before we can Giga Plant a couple of times for more material on our side of the field. From here, we're going to overlay for a copy of Tolmy and add the Psy Blocker back to hand, and then, of course, we can use Giga Plant's effect for a Giga Plant, make a copy of Cross Sheep, use Giga Plant in the new zone for a Giga Plant, and end on Ceruya. We can Giga Plant back a Lone Fire Blossom and then activate Ceruya's effect in order to summon uh, this copy of Psy Blocker after making Exodius. We'll call... 30,000 year old white turtle, and as we start to go through the combo a second time, our opponent figures out what's happening. They aren't willing to sit through literally naming every single card in the game, so after Giga Planting for about the millionth time this turn, they elect to concede. Well, we're back, and just how did the Psychic Soldier perform? Let's consult our super scientific metrics above. I'm giving this prohibition in disguise a 1 in terms of consistency. Not only does its repeated use necessitate a list like this one, it's also got about 90 garnets. This is one of those decks where Pot of Generosity might improve things. I'm giving this smiley chest a 1 in terms of investment. I mean, look at this. We're playing Paladin of Dark Dragon, for God's sake. I'm giving the longest loop I've ever encountered a 3 in terms of payoff. This is the absolute best payoff you could hope for short of an FTK. I dare you to think of a combination of cards that beat this setup, you won't even be able to play them. Of course, Cyberstein means that you've got to be pretty quick at it for time rule purposes. That said, my final verdict is... a pass on the Blockster. Jillian! Call Konami and tell them to stop printing new cards! They're ruining my FTK!